I think it should have happened before a long time ago. But again, they're going to do everything they can to rig it. That's why I'm saying we're headed for the worst crash ever because of all this phony money they pumped into the market. And look at how, look at the merger and acquisition activity in 2021, the highest ever. Why? Because of all of the, all of the cheap money. So the bigs are control of everything. And now look what's going on with Blackstone, BlackRock, Blackstone, one of the BlackRock, with, the, with their real estate deals. And now people are pulling out of it. And they're going after this guy Think This is what I see as the worst of the real estate crisis, not the housing market. The yeah, the prices are going to go down, but it's not going to be like, you know, the, the, the crash back in 2008 because there was no subprime mortgages this time. A lot of people paid what they could afford to buy. It's going to be in the commercial business sector. Depending on whose data you look at, we'll take an average. Your office occupancy rate in the United States is at best around 60% compared to what it was before the COVID war in 2020. Go to Europe, 46%. London, about 35%. Now, when people were forced to stay home and they're in their homes for months and they're saying to themselves, holy Christ, I was getting up at five o'clock in the morning to drive to work. I'm not going to do that anymore. This work at home trend is real. So if they're only going back to the office two or three days a week, people are not going to be renewing their leases. We're talking about interest rates going up. Oh, now you have to pay more on your loan. And while your office occupancy rate is low, and now your, t your tenants aren't renewing their leases. And if they are, instead of taking 10 floors, they're taking two. You are going to see a crash in the commercial business sector, the likes of which are unimaginable. Oh, we're going to turn them into housing. Shove it. No, you're not. Not for the buildings that were built in the last 50 years. They can't be turned into housing. So anyway, going back, that's where I see a big crisis. But again, as I mentioned earlier, I thought going back to 2012, that they were, it was going to crash then. Everything was on the, everything, all of the data was crash ready. And they made a crap called quantitative easing. Well, I, I, I don't think it's going to resonate through the residential market because it's also a supply and demand issue. And there's not a lot of demand, a lot of supply on the market. The big ones that are going to be heard are these private equity groups, like the Blackstones, that are buying up. Is it private equity groups have bought up, I think, about 30% of all the housing since the COVID war started. Again, that began in 2008. That never existed before, that they were buying up housing. As people were going bust the private equity groups, and by the way, when I was a young guy, there were no such thing as hedge funds or private equity groups. So I mean, the whole country's been taken over by the bigs. So now going back to it, they're the ones that are going to be hit hard. But again, what they'll do is because they're gamblers and they know how to, you know, George Carlin, the great guy, he said, you know, it's one big club and you ain't in it. And that's what it is. You know, so they're all, they're all connected. Like I said, you know, oh, by the way, it's Christmas time coming and it's a celebration of Jesus Christ. Oh, you mean the Jesus Christ that drove the money changers out of the temple? What was it Jamie Dimon's great, great grandfather over there? And the cat's hanging on the cross three days later. I mean, this is what you're dealing with. They're all their money junkies. And, and again, as I mentioned before about the repo markets, pumping in $7 trillion from September 2019 to, to January 2020. So again, they're going to do everything they can, but when it does go down, the bigs are going to try to gobble up more of the housing. Again, here, the, the average price of a home is around $400,000, right? In the United States. And by the way, they don't put that number into the CPI. Why not? Because we're making up this crap so we don't have to pay people on Social Security more money because it's tied to the CPI. Anyway, let's say the housing has gone up, what, 40% since 2020. In order to own a house, to buy a house, according to the latest data, I forgot the name of the company that wrote did it, you have to earn, depending on which state you're living in, household income has to be between $165,000 to $195,000 a year. And what, what, what's your median household income around, what, $70,000, 63000 around sixty-five dollars to $75,000, I don't know. Yeah, around that number. I don't know the exact one right now. But that, so that's what I'm saying. They're buying up everything because people can't afford to buy homes. This did not exist before. The headlines over the last couple of days was about, you know, Blackstone and about the, the withdrawals from their uh, $69 billion in the property fund. 
And so people are pulling money out of this thing like crazy. And this uh, Schwartzman, the, uh, he, he disputed the idea that the restrictions reflected problems with the fund. And they have $125 billion in assets, mostly invested in warehouses and apartments in the U.S. And now let's go to warehouses. They're closing those down, too. They're not building those anymore like they used to. So, yeah, you, you, you nailed it. It, you, it's, it could be very serious. But I don't think it'll bring down the whole housing market. And what will happen is, being again that it's one big club and you ain't in it, there'll be another private equity group that comes in, bails them out, and takes a big chunk of their with what they got. But yes, it's going to hurt big time when this happens, but I don't think it's going to crash the housing market to the extent that it did in 2008. Again, with housing have gone up, the prices have gone up over 40% in two years. They go down 20%, 30%, even 40%. You know, okay, you bought it for too much. But again, in the long term, the things go back up again. You know, when I moved to Rhinebeck, which was a no place back in 1979, and now it's like the Hamptons of the North, I bought 38 acres of land and an old house on it for $28,000. So, when you look at inflation and you look at the way things are going and we're talking about the dollar, inflation is going to continue. What is the average price of an automobile? Almost $46,000. $46,000? Are you kidding me? When I was a kid, a slice of pizza and a soda was 25 cents. So what I'm saying is, yes, these things are going to go down. But long term, they're going to go back up because inflation is going to continue to moving forward because of all of the cheap money they've injected into the system over the decade. The dollar's only strong because the others are so weak. But the whole thing is going down. And America is going down big time. Do people realize how serious this is and how the bigs have taken over everything in this country? And that if we don't bring it back to we the people, we're finished. And they could care less. They could care less. All they want is more money. All they want is more money. Again, I was on the other side. These are psychopaths, sociopaths, and pathological liars that are running and ruining our lives. And that if we the people don't unite for a higher order, this thing is over. Because it's going to go down big and they could care less about the people. Again, you're looking at 63% of Americans, according to the data, living paycheck to paycheck. Oh, I forgot. The wholesale numbers came out today. It went up more than they said that they thought it would. Oh, remember I said a new third party? Ready for this? Majority of Americans don't want Biden or Trump to run again in 2024. CNBC survey shows. The survey found 61% of the public think Trump should not seek the presidency compared with 30% who believe he should. And 70% say Biden should not run for a second term with just 19% supporting him. As I said, it's time for a new third party.